All right. So in this video, we want to cover how you can use cookie-based authentication and token-based authentication at the same time. So now we have a new authentication provider and that is uh, token-based authentication. So imagine a situation where you have an, an application that is for one accessible from the web and on the other hand, it should also be accessible from devices uh, or a CLI or maybe like an Android app and those uh, cannot use a browser-based login flow uh, just because the environment doesn't allow to use cookies. Uh, so in that scenario, uh, we want to use the token-based authentication flow. And with Wintergraph, you can actually combine the both. So you can have like two apps talking to the same backend using the same authentication provider and so the way you configure that is actually if you look at the authentication config in Wundergraph config ts you can see that uh, for one we have cookie based we have token based authentication and then here we configure our two authentication providers so one is the demo provider that's the uh, github uh, authentication provider uh, that comes out of the box with Wundergraph. then we have an open id connect provider in that case we're using auth0 and for token based authentication uh, we also use the auth0 provider and to facilitate that we need two things one is the jwks url uh, so in this case we use the, the jwks introspection endpoint to download or yeah to download the json web key set to then be able to validate uh, JWT tokens and we use the user in info endpoint to get the information about the user so usually what you get from a uh, OpenID connect server you get the ID token which we just uh, throw away uh, we just use the access token and then using the access token uh, Wundergraph can use the user info endpoint to get more info on the user and that way uh, the only thing we need in the client with token-based authentication is the access token, which can also be opaque, in which case we only validate it against the user info endpoint. And that way we get all the claims from the user, like uh, the ID, email, etc., profile data. And then we are ready to build our app. So looking at the application ourselves, so here you can see it's a very, very simple uh, chat there's one message already we can use the login flow uh, that is provided by uh, Wundergraph out of the box so that's just one click of a button and you can see we're already logged in we have two roles user and super admin and we can now write a message like hey from web app and we submit that the UI is updated uh, behind the scenes, we're using a generated API on top of a Postgres, but you could use any API you want. Okay, so next step is we also want to connect to this application with our uh, non-browser-based app. So in this case, I'm just using uh, Postman as an example, but it could just be like anything. Uh, let me make that a bit smaller. Okay, so here's our a uh, browser-based app and for uh, simplicity I just disable authentication uh, I have the route prepared here add message and I want to send a new message where I say hey from postman and I send this message you can see we're unauthorized all right but as you saw in the config we have configured token-based authentication uh, so that means we can move forward and uh, yeah, get ourselves a token. So we go to authorization. Here we say auth2. I have everything prepared already. So that's our uh, authentication uh, provider, client ID secret. And we're requesting scopes, open ID profile and email. We click get new access token. You see that it goes through the flow. I'm already logged in with that application. So it gives me this token, which I can now say, use this token, okay? 
And just to try it out, we go to the token endpoint on Wondergraph and see what information we get. And uh, in this case, you can see, okay, uh, by introspecting the opaque token we got from Auth0, we can see this is our Auth0 user ID, and then we have email, name, etc. Here's our profile and uh, the roles, they, are ca they come from uh, the Wondergraph hook. So let's have a quick look at that. So here's Wondergraph hooks TS. And you can see if the user user email is not supplied, we, we just deny access. So in that case, uh, we wouldn't allow the user in. Uh, if they are a super admin, we give them user and super admin rights. Uh, in this case, uh, we're not a super admin. And then the default one is we allow the user in and add the roles or set the roles to user. Okay, so with that token, let me open up my web app in the backend. And with that token, if I now go to add message, here's my buddy, hey from Postman, I send that again. You can see uh, it appears in the browser because we have uh, real-time updates out of the box. And then we can try some more things. Like for example, I can go to add message. We have role-based access already enabled here. And I could now set this to super admin. So that would mean only with super admin uh, permissions, you would be allowed to send that message. So let's try it again. You see, this is unauthorized this time. So we need to make sure we're actually a super admin. So let's change the hooks configuration for that. So I go here and I add myself to the list of super admins. So now if I find my user email in the super admins, I'm a super admin as well. So we use some caching. Uh, in that regard, we have to obtain a new token because we cache the information about the token. So let's do that, proceed, use that new token. We go to this endpoint just to check. And you see now we have a, one more role. We're also a super admin and going back to our post. Uh, hey from Postman as admin or super admin. And let's try that and message is there. Let's go back to our web app. You can see here's our uh, web application and I can now log out, use the auth zero provider. And you can see we're now a super admin on the web as well. So yeah, that was everything I wanted to show. Just a quick uh, wrap up. So if you build applications uh, and you want to use authentication both from the browser and from a non-browser based environment, that's super easy with Wondergraph. All you do is you configure your cookie based provider and your token based provider. We use JWKS uh, to validate tokens. Um, and in case you're not using a JWT, but just a uh, opaque token, in that case, we skip the JWKS step and straight go to the user info endpoint to obtain the user info. Then we have all the claims we need and we run through our hook, uh, the mutating post authentication hook, where you can then decide if you want to let that user into your application or not and what roles to give them. So for example, you can use the claims that already come from the authentication provider and just forward them or reuse them. And then depending on the roles you have, you can assign different roles to your mutations or your queries. So in this case, you can only uh, create this message when the user matches all of those roles. And in this case, they have to match super admin. So only then uh, they are let in. Yeah, that's everything I wanted to show. Uh, you can try it out if you go to wondergraph.com. There's a bunch of information how to quick start a project. And then if you go to the docs, you find more info on how to use the authentication providers, etc. 
yeah, thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon. If you have any questions, uh, you can jump to our Discord, uh, which is wondergraph.com slash Discord, and then you can just pop in your questions and yeah. I hope to see you there. Bye-bye.